We all know mountain biking can be expensive, but here are nine ways you could be wasting your money on how to avoid them. Underwashing your bike is really going to wear it out quicker, particularly the drivetrain. Even if you re lube it back up and douse that thing in oil, it's just going to act like a grinding paste. If it's covered in grit and dirt like mine currently is, it's going to wear that drivetrain away so much faster and it makes you look super scruffy. Overwashing could also potentially cost you a bit more money, potentially in using more cleaning products, but my top tip here to use minimum out of this is actually to wet the bike down first, blast off the worst of the mud and the muck, then stick your cleaning product on and then get busy with your brush. Then with a quick rinse off, you won't have used much of your cleaning product and you'll get a really good result. But where I think it could cost you a bit if you're overwashing your bike is if you're skimping then on the maintenance. Because eventually if you're washing your bike all the time, things like grease will wash out of the bearings. So washing your bike all the time is really good. I definitely recommend it. But you then have to match it with a bit of regular maintenance to make sure you keep your bike running nice and smooth, but also so you don't end up wasting money on things like bearings. One of the most expensive parts of your bike uh, that is consumable is your drivetrain. Obviously your grips, your tires, they wear out. Tires are expensive, I'll get onto those in a minute. But your drivetrain, if you let it get too worn out, eventually you'll have to just buy a chain and a cassette and sometimes even uh, a chain ring as well because you'll find when your chain starts slipping, if you just buy a new chain and stick it on the old cassette, it'll slip just as bad. Uh, and so that's quite expensive. Cassettes, particularly these days, if you're buying a fancy one, can be a lot of money. So the way to save a bit of money here is to actually buy yourself a nifty little tool that will last you forever. Uh, and this is a chain checker. So you can actually slide it into your chain. This is going to tell you how stretched it is, therefore how worn it is, because that's what happens with chains. Eventually, they'll get worn down and stretch out. So this, as you can see, it goes slides just into that link. At the moment, it's barely going in at all. So you can tell on this scale here, it says, okay. If it goes in past that first notch, it's 0.5 worn. If it goes all in, it's 0.75 worn. So what you wanna do is when your chain gets to about 0.5, then you can replace the chain and you won't have to change a cassette. You can normally get away with two or sometimes even three chains if you don't let it get past beyond that point before you then have to replace the whole thing. So it's quite a nice way of saving yourself a bit of cash just simply by checking your chain every so often. Tyres are generally quite an expensive part of your bike and of course they do wear out. So. Try and be realistic with the tyres that you should be running on your bike. I am being Mr. Fancy Pants at the moment because I actually have the Vittoria Enduro Race tyres on here. So the race means it's the soft compound, super sticky, like you can see. Put my thumbnail into there, it really moves around. So that is a super grippy tyre, which is a lot of fun to ride. It doesn't roll maybe quite as fast as a trail tyre, but like I say, I love it because it's grippy. But the payoff there is that soft rubber is not going to last you very long. So you see Daniel racers, Enduro racers, obviously loving tyres like this. But for your average Joe, which well, technically I'm an average Joe nowadays as well, it's probably a waste of my money uh, to be running race tyres, whereas I might as well just have a set of the normal Enduro, get a slightly faster on tyre, pay off in a little bit of grip, but it'll last me a lot longer. There are loads of great options nowadays for frame protection. So if you've got yourself a new bike, now is the best time to do it. Obviously, a lot of bikes these days come with really nice things like chainstay protectors that do a really good job and look really neat nowadays. But often you can add a bit more protection to things like your frame. So you can see there's some really nice clear protection there. See on the cranks, they've got a bit of tatty on this bike now. So it might be time to rip those off, clean it up and stick some new ones on there. 
Obviously, it's particularly important if you're thinking about selling your bike once you've had enough out of it. You can, like I say, pull it off. The bike's going to look immaculate underneath there. But also on things like chainstay protectors or even cranks. If you're one of those people that rides a bit with wonky feet, we, we all know one of those. They can actually rub away even the through the paint and through the frame sometimes. So definitely get a bit of something between your feet and the bike so you don't damage it. Uh, fork lowers, particularly, uh, I know if people racing downhill, if you're doing uplift in places like the UK or bikes get stacked together, they can get wrecked. So it's definitely a good idea, a good idea. even if you're not thinking about resale money, resale value, get a bit of protection on your bike, it's gonna save the frame and the rest of the components. If you're using goggles or glasses in really muddy conditions like the UK, they're obviously going to get really dirty. So it is quite easy to actually scratch the lenses. If you're out on the trail and they're muddy and you get your jersey and you just wipe it, you're wiping that grit into the lens and they're going to scratch. So I try to keep that to a minimum. The best way of getting these clean, obviously these aren't too bad. So I'll, I'll leave the lens in and all I'm going to do is get one of these really soft cloths, get some water on there and give them a wipe off. Super simple. If these are really bad, I'll take the lens out to do that. And actually, I would throw the, the goggle frame and the strap into the washing machine. Obviously, oh, don't do that. If you wash these too many times in a hot wash in the washing machine, they can get a bit scruffy and the elastics can start going. So try and do it nice and cold and probably don't try and do it too often. Obviously with glasses, same sort of thing. I don't, I don't wash the frame obviously, but make sure you just get a bit of water you know, if they're really muddy, I'll take them in the house, get them in the sink and really wash them off before I even get to the soft cloth. I kind of take a bit of a similar stance with my riding kit. Obviously this stuff can be quite expensive too. If you've got technical jackets, things like that. If they're filthy, like these are pretty dirty, I'll actually wash these with my bike. I'll use my hose, get rid of the worst of that and then put them in the washing machine. These are really durable, super tough. Wash these loads and loads of times, they'll last forever. If I've got something like a waterproof jacket, then I'll treat that with a bit more care and you can get that really nice uh, stuff like Nick Wax, where you use special detergent to wash your expensive waterproof jackets and then reproof them. That's gonna make sure you get the most out of that expensive bit of kit. There you go, so there's nine ways to save yourself a bit of money. Uh, there's a bit of elbow grease in some of those, but hey, get a bit more bang for buck and some fun out of your bike. So if you've got any more, definitely jump into the comments. I would like to hear them, the community would like to hear them. Uh, so get involved. And of course, if you haven't, subscribe to GMBN because you're gonna miss out.